What is up amigos? Today we're talking about the potential flow over a cylinder and how to really calculate it. So in past videos with potential flow, we've talked about how to not only make stream functions and potential functions, but also how to add various flow components together to make different objects. Today we're talking about the cylinder and how to, which components of flow to add together to make a cylinder. So let's say I have a uniform flow here. And if you don't know what that is, check out this video here. And we know that the stream function of this equals v infinity r sine theta in the pole coordinates. Now, what about a doublet? We went through the doublet in this video here, and we know that if you have a point here and you have a doublet coming out like this, so on and so forth, excuse the drawing, but uh, you get the picture. So the doublet's stream function is psi equals minus k on two pi, sine theta on r, and k is the strength of the doublet. So by themselves, they look fairly ordinary, but what if we were to put them together? We would then get something that looks like this. We have a point in the middle here where the flow comes out. This is the doublet's contribution effectively, and that's the origin, let's say. Then we have the uniform flow coming along, and this will actually go around like this, divide, and zip out, and then the rest of the flow will come over like this. And let's put some uh, directions for these streamlines here. Now, these are the two components together and already you can probably see that this kind of looks like a cylinder. Let's go through the math of it and look at its properties to see if it really is a cylinder or not. So if we were to combine these two stream functions together, the good thing is you can just add them together as we've gone through in other videos. So the psi function for this um, component here, so both of these two components make this resulting flow. The stream function equals this plus this, so v infinity r sine theta minus k on 2 pi sine theta on r. And this equals v infinity r sine theta 1 minus k on 2 pi v infinity r squared and that is the stream function now i'm going to add a new term and i'm just going to substitute a new term in it may not make sense at the moment but just bear with me for a second so i'm going to say r squared equals k the strength of the doublet divided by 2 pi v infinity so that goes to r equals k on 2 pi v infinity square rooted and don't need to worry about it too much at the moment. We'll come back to this once we've done a few more lines of math. So, psi, the psi function, the string function, equals v infinity, subbing this r into here now, r sine theta, 1 minus r squared on r squared. So, capital R on lowercase r squared. So, that's all well and good. And we know that from the string function, we can derive the... Uh, velocities in two components for the radial components vr and v theta. So vr we know equals 1 on r e psi on v theta. And if you don't know about that, check out this video here on the string function. And, and putting this equation into here, we get 1 on r v infinity r cos theta 1 minus capital R squared divided by lowercase r squared. And this comes out to be 1 minus r capital R squared on lowercase r squared v infinity cos theta. And for v theta, we know this equals mi uh, minus deep psi on vr. So string function here again goes to minus 1 plus capital R squared on lowercase r squared v infinity sine theta. So those are the two velocity components. Now, we also know that we can find the stagnation points if we set vr and v theta to zero. So if I put vr zero and v theta zero, and we have two equations, two unknowns, theta and r, we can find the two coordinates that correspond to anywhere in the flow that the flow has stagnated now. So we find the stagnation points. And if we do that, we find two points. We have r theta equals capital R zero, this is one point, let's call this B at the moment. And we have another point, R pi. And we're gonna call this A. 
And if you plug both of these corners into both of these equations, you'll both get zero both times. So where on this flow do these two points occur, these stagnation points? So we have the center here, and we know that R is featuring in both of these points, and R is actually the radius of this line here, as we'll get to in a little bit as well. But we know that R is the radius, so anywhere along this line here, these two points lie. And we know that the first point B lies at a zero, so that is that point there. This is the zero angle effectively. And then we have another point here, A, so B is here and A is here at pi, so 180 degrees around. These are the two stagnation points which actually occur for cylinders as well. So that's really nice. And in fact, what we actually get is a streamline that's forming between these two. And we can actually go further and find out what the streamline is. So we know that streamlines, if we come back to the stream function, is any time when a stream function equals a constant. So for this line here, if let's say psi equals two, any this line, psi always equals two. So anywhere along this line, these variables may change. So you may get different r's, thetas, and even, um, I guess, r's and thetas. And I was gonna say uh, v infinity, but they don't change, but r's and thetas, they will change along here but psi will always equal two. For this line, it might be minus three, whatever. We don't really know, we can calculate that, but at the moment, we wanna find the line that goes through A and the line that goes through B, the streamline. To do that, we need to sub in what the coordinates of A is to begin with into this equation and find out what psi will equal. And then we can find the streamline anywhere in, along here that goes through A and connects it. So if we were to put in R into this equation, okay, that's fine, we have capital R here, capital R here. Um, if we put in, pi now, sine pi goes to zero. So immediately this equation results in zero. So psi equals zero. That is a streamline that goes through A. Now what about B? Point B, what streamline goes through this point? What is the stream function equal to? So again, we put in R, capital R, capital R, no big deal. Zero, sine theta, sine zero equals zero again. So psi equals zero to four B. So the stream function for A and stream function for B both equal zero. That means that this is the exact same streamline that's going through A and B, it's connecting the two. And what happens is we get the streamline going around here, it hits the stagnation point, divides into two, and then meets up at B, the second stagnation point, and goes downstream. This is a very important finding, and this is the crux really of this cylinder flow. The reason is because as we looked at for the last video, the flow inside this streamline is pretty much segregated from the flow outside because, okay, the strengths and the velocities do affect how big this cylinder is, how big this radius is. But once we have determined that anything that happens inside this point, in, inside this streamline, this dividing streamline, doesn't affect the flow outside and vice versa. So this dividing streamline is really effectively the surface of the cylinder. We can treat it like that because anything that happens inside is really effectively like a solid. It doesn't make a difference. So we can say that this surface now, which is uh, determined by this streamline, this dividing streamline, is actually a solid. And the streamline is given when psi equals zero. So that is how we find the flow over a cylinder and the velocity around the cylinder at any of these points and the streamlines. But there's one more really important thing and one really powerful thing we can do. And that's find the pressure coefficient anywhere along this cylinder the surface. This is actually really cool because um, to find CPs, you usually need to do dra um, CFD and experiments, but from a very quick uh, mathematical approach with velocity potentials and potential flow, you can find what the CPs are around this entire cylinder. So to do that, let's talk about what happens on this surface of the cylinder. So we can find the pressure coefficients on this cylinder surface. So we know that VR equals this and V theta equals this. So on the surface, what does VR equal? Well, if we come to this equation here, on the surface, little r equals capital R, so this goes to zero. So this entire equation goes to zero. So we know that anywhere along this streamline, this surface, VR will always be zero. That's important, we'll come back to it in a, in a second. What about V theta? Well, we know that on this equation, uh, surface coming here little r equals capital r so this goes to one so that's one plus one equals two so it's minus two v infinity sine theta so we have minus two v infinity sine theta 
So that means if we start from here, the um, point at which theta equals zero, and we go around, whatever theta is, we can plug that into this equation and find what the velocity is the theta on this surface. And we know what VR is as well, which is zero. So we know pretty much everything about this surface in terms of velocities now. And we know that CP for a incompressible flow is one minus V on V infinity squared. So if we know what the V infinity is, which we know from the uh, uniform flow, and we know what V is, which we do know from this, we can calculate what the CP is at any point. So plugging these equations in, we know that VR equals zero, but this is not zero. So it's one minus, uh, minus two V infinity sine theta on V infinity squared. And this equals, these cancel out, one minus four sine squared theta. So now we have a very powerful equation again, where all we need to know is what theta is and we can calculate what CP is at any point along this cylinder's surface. That's really cool. Let's go through two more findings um, that are important. So the first one is, what is the maximum CP that we can get on this cylinder surface? That's often very important because it will tell us either how much drag we might be producing or how much lift we might be producing, or just generally, generally how much force is on this cylinder at this point. So plugging in theta and going around, we'll see that maximum CP occurs when sine theta equals zero. That's because we have a negative here, so we want to minimize this negative term subtracting from this one. So whenever theta equals zero or pi, sine theta equals zero, and that results in a CP max of one. So the maximum pressure coefficient we have is at one, and this occurs at B and at A, because this is zero and this is pi for theta. So that's pretty cool. We know. We kind of know that from general theory from elsewhere, that maximum pressures are usually about one for stagnation points. Uh, but what at the minimum? And where does it occur? So if we go along here and we plug in all the values for theta, we find that we want to maximize this negative term that's subtracting from the one. And this occurs when theta equals pi on two or three pi on two, because this results in sine theta being one. So this goes one minus four, which then goes to minus three. And this occurs at pi on two, which is up here, and minus pi on, uh, pi on uh, three pi on two, sorry, which is down here, or minus pi on two, which I want to talk about. And this results in the minimum pressure coefficient being three, uh, minus three, which is very low. So what happens is the flow comes along here, hits the stagnation point, CP max, CP skyrockets to CP max, comes around, accelerates like crazy, the pressure coefficient drops to minus three before recovering here and zipping off. And the pressure coefficient here is plus one. So with this, we've pretty much described everything that happens around a cylinder in terms of the velocity and now the pressure coefficient along the cylinder. One final thing I wanna talk about is if we look at the pressures over the surface, we now start to see that the pressure up here is the same as pressure down here. If we were to do the same kind of thing around the cylinder, we see that they, the top part cancels out with the bottom part. So this cylinder is not producing any lift as it is. To get lift, we need to rotate the cylinder, which we'll cover in later videos. But at the moment, because the pressure coefficient is pretty much symmetrical around this object, it is not producing any lift here. And that is the end of this video. So if you like this video, make sure to like and click the subscribe button. And I'll see you soon. Peace, amigos.